somewhere in the deepest depths of the internet is a song. It's a song that on first listen sounds like an 80s hit you're sure you've heard before. It lives on YouTube under the titles The Most Mysterious Song on the Internet or Like the Wind, but it appears on no streaming service. As you listen to this song, a few unsettling elements begin to jump out. You notice its poppy new wave sound is dimmed by a haunting tape hiss, indicating it was most likely ripped from the radio sometime in the mid 80s. You notice the lead singer sounds like he's singing in English, but on closer examination, the words seem to be in some amorphous language that sounds like a mix of English, German, and Russian. Weird you think, you go to Google to find the author of the song. Surely the YouTube titles must be an exaggeration, but as you press enter on Google, you find yourself directed back to the same YouTube video you just came from. This must be a mistake. Maybe, somehow, Google indexed the main artist for this song on the second or third page. An unlikely scenario, but a possible one. You search again. Nothing. Only a link that leads you back to the original video that started all of this. You sit back. What the hell is going on here? Is this a standalone complex? Is there no point of origin for this song? Is this song even called Like the Wind? Is this guy even singing the words Like the Wind? Nothing appears out of nowhere and this song came from somewhere. So you get to work finding the origin of Like the Wind, but as you discover, the mystery goes far deeper than you could have imagined. The mystery of Like the Wind begins in West Germany sometime in 1984. An avid radio taper, known only as, quote, Darius S., is up on a nondescript evening recording to cassette a broadcast from West German public radio station Norddeutsche Rundfunk, or Northern German Radio. As Darius S. finishes up for the night, he pulls out a cassette label labeling card and begins to write down the bands featured on that night's broadcast. Among those included were Depeche Mode, Simple Minds, Corey Hart, Ray Parker Jr., and Golden Earring among a few other classic 80s bands. But when it came time to label track 8, Darius S. was perplexed. He realized after listening back a few times, he had never heard this song before and was clueless as to who had recorded it. He often omitted recording the DJ's announcements between songs so as not to break the flow of his mixtapes. This left him devoid of any identifying information to help him on his quest to figure out who recorded, quote, track 8. But there was no fixing it, he thought, and so the anonymous Darius S. filed this mixtape away with countless others he had made on cold, dark nights in West Germany and went on with his life. Twenty years pass. In 2004, an adult Darius S. was going through his old mixtapes, reminiscing about the nights he spent with his tape deck excitedly recording new music off of the NDR radio station, when suddenly he noticed something. An old tape from 1984 with a list of bands and songs. Depeche Mode, Simple Minds, Golden Earring, and there it was again. That mysterious song that Darius had only labeled, quote, Blind the Wind, with no artist attribution. He sat there, puzzled. But this is 2004, he thought. Surely, a quick Google search will yield the artist behind Blind the Wind. So he fired up a then only six-year-old Google.com and nothing. No song by the name, quote, Blind the Wind was returned from the search results. How odd, he thought. This song sounds like a mainstream hit from 1984. It can't be that hard to find. But alas, like 20 years earlier, Darius S. put it aside in his mind and went back to his life. Three years pass. In 2007, the mysterious song, still titled on the tape liner notes as, quote, Blind the Wind, caught Darius S. attention yet again. This time, he went to his more tech-savvy sister, who shall be known as Lydia H., and asked her if she could use the internet to find out who was behind Blind the Wind. Lydia, assuming this would not be that big of a deal, decided to post the song to a series of Usenet sites in 2007. I will get my brother an answer in no time, she thought but not one person could definitively confirm the name or artist related to this song. How, thought Lydia, how could a song played on a national radio station in Germany seem not to exist? Lydia spent a bit more time on some forums for German pop music and 80s bands in general, but yet no one seemed to know the answer. Twelve years 
pass. In 2019, a young Brazilian man named Gabriel da Silva Vieira lay awake tormented by one thought that had haunted him since 2017. What was that mysterious song from that West German radio station? Yes, you see, because of the power of the internet, Lydia's posts on a series of Usenet forums from 2007 had found their way into the hands of one Nicolas Zuniga, who worked for the Spanish independent label Dead Wax Records. Nicolas had informed his friend Gabriel of the existence of this song and its unknown origin. However, little did Nicolas know that this would send Gabriel on a years-long quest to track down the author of Darius and Lydia mystery song, now being called Like the Wind. Finally, in 2019, Gabriel decided to post the full song to YouTube and turn to Reddit for answers. It was Gabriel's post that set off the journey that the collective internet has been on for roughly four years now. Redditors, as they are apt to do, became excited and began to search out the farthest corners of the internet for answers. What is the true name of Like the Wind? Who recorded it? What night was it broadcasted? Does anyone have the tapes of that night? To document all of this, Gabriel created a specific subreddit, r slash the mysterious song, where an open source musical archaeological dig has been ongoing since 2019. The most recent update as of 2021 was that Lydia had found an even higher quality version of the song than before and uploaded it to YouTube. Various Redditors have remixed and mastered the song to try and get a cleaner sound. Some users have even suggested Lydia's original version of the song might have accidentally been slowed down due to tape degradation and have re-pitched it back up to its possibly correct key. Despite all this, and being in the era of Google, Twitter, Reddit, and now ChatGPT, the author and true name of the song Like the Wind has still not surfaced. Now, here is where I would like to add my two cents to this discussion. First, we can clearly discount the theory that has been floated on 4chan and in a few Reddit posts that this is actually an Ariel Pink style savant whose home recording from 2007 is being passed off as a forgotten 80s band. Due to Darius and Lydia's hard proof from 1984, this is impossible. But what of those vocals? That to me is the most mysterious part of the song. As the music kicks in, you think you're hearing English, but on closer listen, the language appears to be some mission mash of English, German, and Russian, as was stated earlier. Now, this is 1984. Not all, but quite a few West Germans were fluent in English at this point. Did they have accents? Sure. But the voice we are hearing on Like the Wind, if it is attempting to sing in English, most definitely has a thicker and more pronounced accent than your typical West German. Which leads me to believe this band must have come from somewhere behind the Iron Curtain. Remember what era this is. Gorbachev was head of the Soviet Union, Perestroika and Glasnost were in full effect, and for the first time the Soviet Union was allowing gatherings to take place without censorship. This was the era of Kino, Aquarium, DDT, and the Soviet rock and roll renaissance. And yet this song managed to find its way into the hands of NDR, a West German radio station. This leads me to believe the likelihood that this came from deep within Russia is small. Given that, the circumstantial evidence leads me to only one likely answer, East Germany. It is my belief that whoever this band is, it is most likely composed of a mix of ethnic Russians and Germans attempting to sing in English. The rudimentary nature of the style, its similarity and aesthetics to other mainland Russian rock bands at the time seems to point in this direction, and while I can't prove this, I am throwing this out there for the archaeologists to run with. The internet may never discover the identity of the band or artist behind Like the Wind, but the entire phenomenon of the hunt for this music just shows the magic of the internet and its ability to unearth hidden musical gems. So I guess I'll just take this moment before I end the video to shout out some incredible bands and albums from the Soviet Union that you should definitely check out. And if the most mysterious song on the internet's origin is never discovered, that's okay. Because as they say, Like the wind, scratch the